Our WPF product line ships with a comprehensive collection of WPF data or field editors. As you might expect, all of these data editors can be used on a standalone basis to edit field values. What you may not know is that many of these editors can also be used to edit cell values in products such as our WPF data grid and our WPF tree list. In this video, I'll discuss version 20.1 related enhancements to our WPF data editors library and show you how you can leverage these changes to deliver a more refined and more elegant user experience for your end users. And with that, time to get started. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use our standard WPF data editors demo app. This app is part of our standard WPF distribution. Okay. First on the list is our updated WPF trackbar control. With this update, our WPF trackbar editor can now draw labels alongside ticks and display a tooltip with the current value when a user drags a thumb. You can customize both tick label and tooltip content and associated appearance settings. Let me jump to our scale customization help topic and show you some customization options. Notice here that you can apply a custom format string to text used for individual tick marks. The property description includes sample code used to apply custom formats to tick text labels. You can also use custom styles to control the manner in which tick items are displayed on screen. Here is the XAML used to customize the track bars tick items. Specifically, we've customized tick items so that it emulates a decimal ruler. Very cool. Version 20.1 also includes extended tooltip support. Let me return to our app and demonstrate how tooltips work. Okay, as you can see, the control can display a tooltip when end users drag the track bar thumb along its scale. Like tick marks, we've given you lots of control over this UI element. For instance, you can apply a custom format string to tooltip text, and you can customize tooltip values using a custom template. The next feature in this tutorial is our WPF date editor component. This is a small but useful enhancement, something we've been asked to incorporate by users seeking to deliver the best possible user experience. As you may know, our date edit allows you to display a calendar, a calendar with time picker or a time picker within its dropdown window. With version 20.1, we've modified the icons used within the edit field to better reflect the values you expect users to enter when using the dropdown. For instance, if your date edit only displays date values and only uses a calendar within the dropdown, we use a simple calendar image for the dropdown button. If your date edit displays and edits both date and time values, the button uses the image of a calendar and a clock. If you're using the WPF date edit to display and edit time values, the button only uses the image of a clock. Okay, on to the next control, our Outlook inspired WPF date navigator. Let me select the date navigator demo so I can describe what you can expect in our version 20.1 release. First, you can now define the date navigator's visible range and you have the ability to choose which date format an end user can select months, years, range of years, etc. The third and perhaps the most interesting new feature is this. You can now specify cell appearance for each cell state, including things like today, disabled, mouse over, etc. Let me switch to our help file and dig into this feature a bit more. Notice here that our date navigator gives you fine grain control over date types displayed within it. For instance, you can display holidays, selected dates, and special dates as needed. Refer to the appearance in our help file for more information. As you can see on screen, with the appearance property, you can create a date navigator with one or more disabled date cells, or you can create a date navigator with selected or highlighted date cells. You have total control to now offer feedback to users. Okay. Now I'll move on to our WPF text editor. Our first new text editing feature is triple click support. I know it's unusual, but if users triple click a text editor, we now select the entire contents of the field. Next, we've improved text selection support for editors that use a mask. End users can now select any desired portion of a mask. 
to allow selection of the entire mask or any portion thereof, you simply set the new update selection on mouse up property to true. In previous versions, this simply wasn't possible. I can help demonstrate by launching our version 19.2 demo. As you can see, selection in the text editor with the mask was restricted to specific sections of the mask. Selection could not span a random range. Once again, in version 20.1, you can select any portion of a mask. Before I wrap up, let me remind you that though this demo covered standalone use of our data editors library, Please remember that most of our field editors can be used in container controls such as our data grid for cell editing. And that's it for this video. If you like this overview of our WPF data editors library, please give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, please comment below. And please remember to subscribe to this channel for more great DevExpress training videos. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.